Hey there, Robert John Hadfield here again from Audio Mover with another cassette tape that uh, we're going to take apart and take a look at inside right now. Picked an interesting tape today. This is a JVC, it says GI90. And this is a normal position tape. Of course, there's the three different types of tapes. There was normal, chrome, and metal. Those were the three standard tape uh, formulas that we were all familiar with. And this one is interesting because the case itself, the shell is perfectly clear. And when I saw this, I realized uh, that this might be something really neat to show. There's something in here that I can tell will be easier to show in this video. And so we're gonna take this apart and I'm gonna show you something kind of interesting about the wheels and how the tape is connected to the wheel, how it stays connected. So what I'm gonna do now is we're going to, to take this thing apart and look what's inside. And like a lot of cassette tapes, any cassette tape that wasn't sealed shut with glue uh, it will all usually have these screws. And there's five of them normally. This isn't, it, the things I talk about here aren't always true, but they're, they're usually, usually the case. So if a tape was held together by screws, there were usually five of them, four in the corners and then one right over in the middle here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these screws out and then we're gonna lift it off and take a look inside the tape. Even though you can see everything that's inside right now, you, there, uh, you'll be able to see a couple of other little things once we open this up. And of course, if you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Leave comments. Let us know other things you'd like us to make videos about. All right, so we're just about done here. We've got four of the screws out. This other one's, there we go, came out. You'll also notice, I don't know if you can tell on this camera here, but it looks like we have metal posts, which we talked about in another video. And I'll show you when we take these out, how that works. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is we're going to lift the top of the shell off right there. And now we're inside. Now the first thing you're gonna see here is this little piece of plastic right here. If you can see that very well on that camera. But all these tapes, generally speaking, are gonna have a little, this little piece of plastic, which is kind of like a, like a gasket. And you'll see this one. It keeps the, the tape on the spool here from rubbing against the plastic of the, of the shell. But you'll also notice that it has a little bit of, see if you can see this, you can see that it has a little bit of texture, some little ridges. And what that does is it puts just a, a tiny bit of pressure on either side of the, of the tape as it winds, and it keeps it nice and uh, nice and tight, tightly wound. From what I mean for, is from, from side to side here. So that's what keeps it really smooth as it winds onto the, onto the reel because you have this little bit of pressure on both sides. Now, now they've taken this apart, show you just some of the normal things that we see in these, these tapes. First thing is we have this little, we have this little magnetic barrier that usually sits right there. And then here's our pressure pad. The pressure pad, let's see if I can grab that. The pressure pad, if you're not familiar with what this does, this sits right there underneath the tape. And as the tape goes by, and it's, here, let me show you. This is a playhead that we took out of, a, of another tape deck. And as the tape, the oxide tape rolls across the tape head, this little pressure pad makes sure, I'm gonna do it this other way so you can see that in the light a little bit better, gives it a nice solid connection to the playhead. So when the, when the playhead gets, when play gets pushed on the cassette uh, player, this goes up and then it sandwiches the tape in between this little piece of uh, felt, this pressure pad and the head, and then that's how you get a nice solid connection uh, with the tape onto the, the playhead, okay. But what I wanted to show you about this tape today is th the, the clear tape, of course, here at the front is always called the leader. It's not always clear, but it's usually some sort of white or this one is semi-clear. 
What I wanted to show you is how the tape actually connects to the reel. So this wheel right here, this reel, you'll see that that is really connected tight to the reel. And you'll see on this other side, you'll see there's this little blue, uh, little blue section of the, of the wheel. And what that is, it actually removes. And the tape gets set in there and then that's pushed into the, uh, to the wheel and that's what holds the, the actual leader tape to the reel really, really solid. And I'll show you how this comes out. I haven't done this on this tape, so I don't know if it'll, how hard it'll be to get it put back in, but you'll be able to get a sense of how this works at least. So I move this out of the way. And you can see it right there. And then this little blue thing, you can kind of, I'm gonna scoot it out this way. You'll see how it's kind of moving. See how I'm moving it out of the way. So once I move it, you'll, you'll kind of get a sense of how that tape is sitting in there. Once I remove this completely, there you go. And that is how a cassette tape, most cassette tapes have, are, have this kind of uh, setup. There are other, there are variations on what this looks like. Most of them have though, what I'm saying is most of them have this, this kind of shape, at least the things that I've seen. There are others that have variations, variations of this that are a little smaller. Some of them have this little, very small piece of plastic and a very tiny hole that it just pushes into. But they're all generally this, this concept. And then of course, you'll see that the tape, you'll see that shape that it was setting in there like so. And then that blue part is what held that in place. Now, what, what's interesting, of course, here at Audio Mover, what we do is we, we take old audio and videotapes and convert them into digital. And what we get periodically, <clears throat> the, if the polymer of plastic is such that it breaks down over time, you'll see that the way that sits in there, it's under just a little bit of pressure as it, as it sits in that space. And over time, certain polymers of plastic will actually get brittle. You, and you, you've actually probably seen this in your own life. Uh, you'll see a plastic that was at one point white and then over time it gets yellow. Well, not only is it, not only is it discoloring, it's actually becoming brittle. And so what will happen with some of these, these, little, uh, these little reels is that over time that all this plastic starts to yellow and, and, and it gets brittle. And because of that little pressure, this will actually crack. And then when you play the tape, the tape will actually just play and come completely off and you'll never have any idea why it came off. But it was because this little thing broke and then it just kind of falls off and then of course the tape pulls out. And then when we open up the tape to fix it, we'll see this thing kind of broken in a couple of pieces and that sitting like this. Matter of fact, there's a, another video on the Audio Mover YouTube channel where I fix a tape with this exact problem where you can see what that looks like. Anyway, so that's kind of a, it's not common, but we do see that periodically where this little thing has broken. And then what happens is once this one breaks, we can be pretty sure that once we play the tape and get to the other side, that one will be broken too just because they, they usually they were taken from the same, you know, the same plastic and they were made at the same time and so they break down at the same rate. So what I'm gonna to try to do now, and this is actually <laughs> really challenging, is to get this, to see if I can get this piece, this tape back in there with this little, uh, this little blue thing. This is not easy. So, and by the way, whenever you're doing this, whenever you're working on repairing tapes, always wash your hands really well. The, what you don't want to do is get a lot of your, your oils and, you know, that kind of thing off of your fingers onto the oxide tape. And once you touch something in here, whatever is on your fingers will potentially then transfer onto the playhead, which is what you're trying to avoid doing. So... 
we're going to see if we can kind of get that in place. Oh, shoot, fell over. Like I said, this is, <laughs> this is not one for fat fingers. Okay, so you want to get that kind of in place, and then it's really just a matter of pressure. Ah! And usually, when I've tried to do this before, I can never actually get it done with my hands. I have a, I usually have to grab a wrench or something to push it into place. But we're going to try this again to see if we can get this to work. Now the nice thing, whenever you're dealing with this, so for example, if, if you do have a tape where this breaks, you take it apart and you see that that little thing is broken, you can, any reel, pretty much from any other tape, can be put in here and replace it. And so we actually have, uh, we have just a, a big case of reels for this very purpose. So we will actually take this out and then we'll just cut the, the leader tape and then we'll just put a new reel in there and connect it and everything works fine after that. So I'm gonna see if I can, oh, there I did. I did it with my fingers, it worked fine. So I just snapped that back into place and now we will see if we can get this back in. kind of didn't get it in there quite right, but it should work correctly once we uh, once we start spinning it. I'm going to show you one other thing here. I pointed this out a second ago when I was talking about it, but these wheels that are supposed to spin freely, you'll see that there's a metal post right there. Now, a lot of times when you're taking these tapes apart, that is not sealed into place usually. And what'll happen sometimes <clears throat> when you take these apart is this little piece of metal will actually just fall off. And you have to set it in there <clears throat> just right. Because when you're trying to put it together, back together, that post not only has to fit in that little hole there, it has to fit on, match this little hole here. So when you're putting it back together, you can imagine if that's off even just a tiny little bit, you'll, you'll have just a mess on your hand and it's really hard to get, the, to get this whole thing put back together. So now I'm going to spin, <clears throat> excuse me, spin this reel back. Better put that wheel back on. We're going to spin this reel back into place. Now, of course, whenever you're doing this, oh, look, it kind of got stuck over that post right there. So many little weird things that can happen with these things. Okay. What I'll usually do is kind of get it semi-tight and I'll hold them semi-tight there. The reason I don't pull it super tight is just what I was just telling you. These little metal posts with too much pressure, you'll just push this whole thing off and then it becomes a little bit of a nightmare. You need to now get this, the, the leader tape pushed on the other side of these, these posts, for lack of a better word. You'll see there's several of them right there and it needs, of course, to be running along there. Now we're going to get this little magnetic shield put back in. This particular shield you'll see is just a flat piece of rectangular metal. A lot of times these shields will actually have some ridges that come up along the, each side and then that helps hold the pressure pad in place. This particular one doesn't. So a lot of tapes are just a little different that way and that usually has a little just a little place that it just sets nicely into. Now we're going to try to get this pressure pad back in place. Kind of struggling to see what I'm doing here. There we go. There we go. Got it. And that is how to get that back together. Now we're going to take this little gasket. We're going to set this over. And these don't, these also just kind of float in place. And then we're going to take the <clears throat> top of the shell, put this back on. Yeah, and you can feel it all settled down right into, right into place. So now we're going to put this thing back together and put all five screws back in. And this tape will play as if we didn't do anything. 
It's these are pretty easy to take apart and look inside and and do this kind of thing. But I thought this would be interesting. There were so many, you know, the, the cassette tapes were a really basic concept, but there were so many little variations of how thing how companies did this. And I, I saw this one in particular, and I saw that they'd had that little that little piece was that blue. So I thought it'd be easy to show show y'all how that works in this particular. In this particular housing. So anyway, there you go. That's a, G, a JVC, which stands for Japan Victor Company. <laughs> the JVC Normal Position Cassette Tape GI90, and uh, that's what it looks like inside. Anyway, be sure and like to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.